chapter 19, verses 9 through 13. We're going to read together. If you would, honor the Lord in standing for reading of his word. If you complete, amen, uh, or if I stop reading, you continue to the completion of verse number 13, amen. amen. All right, First Kings 19, beginning at verse 9, ready, read. And he came thither unto a cave, and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Uh huh. Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out and stood in the entering end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? What doest thou here? And that is the question the Lord told me to pose to his people on this morning. What doest thou here? What are you doing here since you've been saved? Since you've been delivered. Since you've been made whole. What are you doing here? Lord, speak now and we will hear and obey. For it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in his presence. What are you doing here? Yeah. What, what, what? What are you doing here? Too many of us sitting at ease in Zion. I got to tell you what God said. Too many of us still come into church because grandma and them said, because it's the popular thing to do in our culture, in our society. Well, that's what I was trained to do on on Sunday morning. We get up and we go to church. Not that I have a real yearning. Not that I have a real passion. Not that I'm really seeking anything from the master. But it's that thing that we do. About like 
getting up, going to work. It's a part of a responsibility. Look, 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 look. Not, 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 not that it's something that I really look forward to doing. <laughs> not, not that it's something that I really desire to do, but because this is what I was trained to do. This is what uh, the, the, the habit uh, that, that I formed over a period of time that I would get up and go to church. And, and then, God forbid, you know, I, I wouldn't want to uh, hear old Reb, you know, trying to get at me about where you been in the last <laughs> few Sundays. <laughs> Why I ain't been seeing you at church? Oh, Lord, I don't want to hear his mouth. I don't want to hear him. Yeah, sending the, sending the, the, the captains or sending the, 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 the stewardship leaders to, to call and check on me. Uh, I don't want it to be where uh, uh, I got to be uh, coming into the office. <laughs> What are you doing here, then? I didn't say it. God said it. God is calling you into question. God has set a question mark. He has set a table of accountability before you uh -huh. and God is wanting us to take an inventory yes, of our own lives yes. mind you if I may just be totally honest <laughs> God already know what you're doing <laughs> hey, God, God know what you're doing, and nobody else don't know. You may not even know, but God know. Yeah, but he said in his word, I'm going to let the wheat and the tap grow together. So in other words, I'm going to let the real and the fake keep on growing. Keep on, y'all keep on coming. And I'll do the separating. When I come, because I want to remind you, saints of God, believers and non-believers alike, there is still coming a judgment day. There is still coming a time where you're going to have to answer to the master what it is you were doing with the time that he gave you here on this earth. What did you do? with your opportunity. Yeah. Did you use it to his glory? Mm -hmm. Did you use it to share? Uh -huh. To let somebody know that Jesus is still alive. That yeah. I want you to understand, my friend, my brother, my sister, that there is still hope. Yeah. I understand things may be gotten hard, may have gotten hard for you. Issues may have arisen in your life and you may not understand why you've gotten uh, uh, to this point in your life. But I want to let you know yeah. that God has brought you to this point yes, yes. so that he can prove himself yeah. to you, yeah. that he can show you that he's still sitting high. Yeah. Amen. And he's still looking down low. Yeah. Uh, God, God is not slack. Concerning his promises. For he said, Lo, I'll be with you always. When those friends walk off and leave you. When you don't have anybody else you can depend on. Anybody else you can trust in. He said, I will be with you. Even to the end. Coming up on the ladder right. So 
anxious. Don't ever get so afraid that you allow the enemy to run you away from the place that God placed you at. Hallelujah. Right. Unity Jamboree, hosted by the legendary Dr. Bobby Jones. Get ready for Luther Barnes. The Canton Spirituals. The Alabama Girls. The Mighty Clouds of Joy. And the Violet Airs. The annual Unity Jamboree, Saturday, June 4th, at the First Albany Deliverance Cathedral. Get your tickets, they're on sale now. Get them online at Eventbrite. Get them at the church or Odyssey Records. Don't miss it. Bless you, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, yes, we're so glad that you have chosen to join us this morning on another outpouring of God's Spirit on the latter rain. Well, listen, we want to invite you now to join us on our online uh, platform. That's www.elvm.org where you can re request one of our ministry materials, whether it be a CD or a DVD, however it is that you would want to uh, connect with us. We would love to hear from you. And we listen, we want you to know that God has a special miracle and a special blessing just for you. This is our year of great awakenings. This is our year of God outpouring new blessings into the lives of his believers. So listen, if you would, just go to our website again, www.elvm.org and request either a CD or DVD of one of my messages or either one of the archive messages of our founder, Apostle Isaiah Revels. Please drop us a note and let us know how you've been enjoying the program thus far. We'll love to hear from you. And remember, God bless you and we love you. But God gives us a depiction here story that many of us may have heard, but just wanted to try to uh, take a different angle and show you, amen, where God is and yeah. how God uh, looks at our various situations, because we see in this particular story, the man of God, Prophet Elijah. Mighty, powerful man of God. And according to the word earlier in that chapter, uh, even in the previous chapter, he had just had a great battle. Uh -huh. Had just faced over 400 of the prophets of Baal. Yeah. And he, a man, uh, wanted to, by the guidance of God, Put on a showcase. Yeah. How many of us will be a willing, will be uh, uh, available to God for him to use us yeah. to put on a showcase? Right. Sometimes God wants us to get into certain conflicts so that he can prove who he is in your life. So it was with prophet Elijah uh, that the prophets of Jezebel uh, had risen up and uh, they were taken over. And uh, prophet Elijah said, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove to you that your Prophets are false. And what I want to do is put on a contest and the God who answers by fire, let him be true. And every other God be a lie. He says, so listen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put this thing on display before the whole host of Israel. So let's go up to Mount Carmel and let's 
put it on before the whole host that you get your top prophets, your top uh, wizards, and you allow them to call on your God. I'm glad that I serve an almighty God. <laughs> My God ain't never scared. He said you have them to call on your God. Tell them to put on a show. Answer. By fire. If. If he all that. Now it shouldn't be too much. You done been around here showcasing and prancing around, you know, in the midst of the people of God. And, and so many times that's what uh, God does is he uh, let the devil go so far. Uh-huh. And then he'll put that boy in check and say, yeah, yeah I want to show you, this, 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 this still the devil now. The devil still ain't nothing but a copycat. He, he still don't, don't have authentic power. So the prophets of Baal called on their God. The Bible said they went as far as cutting themselves. Sacrifice of blood. Just answer. Just let fire fall. And they called on him according to the word from morning to evening. He didn't answer. And right before they wrapped up that day in the afternoon, Elijah was picking at him. He said, y'all must have called him loud enough. He, he must have hear y'all. Y'all y'all ain't called him like y'all really meant it. He said, I tell you what, I'm going to get y'all to go and bring me some cisterns. And I want you to, uh, on this altar here of sacrifice, I want you to douse water on this altar. Drown it out. Matter of fact, tell you what. Digging swans, he said, y'all take and dig a trench around the altar. And then not only wet the altar, wet the sacrifice, but fill the trench with water. He said, because I'm going to show you the power of my God. He said, then I'll... I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to ask, them, ask my God to answer. All right, all right. And Elijah prayed, and no sooner than he had prayed, and he told him, said, not for my sake, Lord, because I already know you more than able, but for the sake of them that are looking around. Sometimes you have to put God in a place to put on his own showcase. God, not because I don't trust you, not because I don't know you, not because I don't have a relationship, but because there are people that's looking around. There's somebody that may uh, be saved, somebody that may be delivered when they see you move by your power. When they see this miracle happen, is somebody's life going to be changed. That was the whole purpose of miracles, signs and wonders being wrought, not to bring no uh, 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 glory to the man that was doing it, but that God would be glorified. Hallelujah. And when Elijah had prayed, the Bible said that God answered by fire. And not only did he burn up the, the sacrifice, but he lapped up the water that was in the trench as well. A great and mighty display. And all of those that were standing around, Elijah said, now you're going to have to pay for your insurrection, for leading God's people astray. He killed them all, over 400 prophets. He destroyed them. Yeah. Now, we, we don't go to that extent now because, you know, it's just a different day and time. But, but back during that time, you had to pay. If your God didn't want for real, you had to pay with your life. 
And after Elijah had slain all of Jezebel's prophets, Jezebel's husband ran back and said, look, uh, baby, do you know that Elijah done sit up here? Not only did he win the contest, but he done destroyed and wiped out all your, your head men, your, your, your worshipers, your prophets. She said, oh, no, he didn't. I tell you what, you go and you let Elijah know that I'm going to make him just like he did my prophets. I'm going to have his life since he had the life of my prophets. Now, the thing was is that after God had already <laughs> demonstrated his power, it seemed to me that uh, it wouldn't have been anybody on the other team that could have scared me. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, you know, that's just me. But after I done seen God manifest himself in such an auspicious way, just the audacity of this woman to stand up and defy the man of God. I guess that alone was enough to bring fear. Because she said, I, look, uh, Elijah, I don't care. I don't care nothing about your God burning up the, the, the sacrifice and lapping up the water. I don't care nothing about the fact that you done killed all of my prophets. I'm coming at you. See, and sometimes that's the way the devil will challenge us. Even after we done just seen a mighty move of God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Even after we just seen God deliver, we just seen God make a way in the midst of a dry land. We've just seen, we just experienced God open a door that no man could have opened. Out of all of that, here go the devil. All right. So many times, that's what our problem is. We think the devil ought to just stop. Why don't he just go on it and go? Yeah. Ain't he seen what God just did? Yeah. Well, see, what you fail to realize is the devil already know who God is. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. He, he never doubted that God was almighty. It's us. Satan is getting and trying our faith. He's trying our belief standard. What is it that we are going to trust in? What is it that we are going to believe in? Satan challenged Elijah right in the midst of a great victory. So much and so that according to the word of God, it scared Elijah to the point that he got up and he started running. He left. And that's the first thing that I want to teach you on is that it's important when we are facing an enemy, when we're facing the devil, never leave our place of safety. Don't ever get so anxious. Don't ever get so afraid that you allow the enemy to run you away from the place that God placed you at. Hallelujah. God had put Elijah on the top of Mount Carmel, uh -huh. put him on a place of notoriety. Yeah. And just because of what Jezebel said, he got afraid. Yeah. He left 
the place that God had placed him. Yes, God bless you now. We're here at a closing of another program. But before we end our program on this morning, I would like to uh, ask you if you would join me in just a word of prayer. There may be somebody in our viewing audience that does not know Christ, that does not know Jesus in the pardoning of their sins. If that's you, well, my sister, my brother, I would not want to close out this power pack uh, uh, broadcast without offering you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. If that's you, just bow your head with me in an act of agreement and say these words with me. Lord Jesus, I love you and I thank you for dying for my sins. But I also believe that you rose again on the third day. And because you live, I can live. Because you rose, I can rise. Thank you, Lord, for a new life in victory. Now, Jesus, I ask you to fill me with your spirit. Fill me now with the precious Holy Ghost, and I'll live for you for the rest of my life. As I often say, the most important thing now for you is just to believe and also connect up with the church, connect with the ministry. If you can come here to our uh, church here on 1506 South Slappy Boulevard in the Good Life City of Albany, Georgia. But if you're not able to find a full gospel Bible believing church in your local area and become a faithful member because you need help at this point to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Well, God bless you. We'll look forward to seeing you here. If not, just keep believing God, have faith, and connect up with that church in your area. God bless you now. We love you. Thank you for tuning into Ladder Rain. We hope you have enjoyed the word this morning. To order a copy of this message in its entirety, please visit our online store at www.efvm.org or call 229-436-7707. To partner with us on our mission to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, please make a donation by clicking the Give link on our website or through the Givelify app. Once again, we thank you for tuning into Ladder Rain. Join us next week as we experience the outpour, the overflow, the Ladder Rain.